All right, people, again, Assalamualaikum and a very good evening to all of you. Uh, my name is Ayumi Shahira, like uh, teacher Asia has mentioned. We used to be course mates back in New Zealand. Uh, we were together doing our uh, TESOL degree while we were in Auckland, New Zealand. So let me just share a bit about, uh, about myself, so in case you're wondering. I know Zarifa, you probably know a lot about me. Okay, there's more people coming. Yeah, mm -hmm. just admit that. All right. Okay, so I'm going to share the screen now. Tell me if you can see um, this slide presentation on the screen. Do you see people? Yes. Yes, yes you can see. Okay, great. We'll go to the first page. All right, just a bit about myself. My name is Ayumi Shahira Binti Saleh. I am from Penang, born and raised in Penang. Anyone from Penang here? Zarifa, besides I'm Zarifa. From... <laughs> where, where are all of you from? I'm from Laka, but I stay in KL. I see. Uh, Eileen Aya. Yeah. Are you working, Alina? Uh, yes, I'm working. Working. Okay. What about the rest of you? Cairo, where are you from, Cairo? From Shalam. From Sha'alam, so nearby. La. What are you doing? Uh, do you work or? No, I study, student. You're a student still. How old are you, may I ask? 26. 26, okay. Um, who else? Salisa, where are you from, Salisa? I'm uh, from Laka. From Laka. Uh, now staying at uh, Sha'alam. Sha'alam also, okay. And another one, are you, was it? Where are you from, are you? Uh, I'm from Sha'alam. Shah Alam also. Haja, are you also from Shah Alam? Uh, no, I'm born in Banting and now mm -hmm. staying at Rawang. In Rawang, okay. So from the most of you from the south. Okay. Um, wait, we'll go back. So again, a bit here. I also have my master's in linguistics and English language studies from USM. I've been an English teacher from 2011. So right now I'm teaching in MRSM Balik Pulau. I am also a trainer for TOEFL Junior. TOEFL is a program that was designed in the USA. So I became trainer, Alhamdulillah, in 2018. And I got the opportunity to go to New York and they trained me over there for two weeks on becoming TOEFL uh, trainer. I am also a trainer for Mara English Competency Program. And just the normal things most of the time what I do is I would be going on invitation as speaker for English PT3 and SPM also doing home tuitions for PT3 and SPM so my experience teaching adults mostly come from being a trainer for Mara English program so I hope I would be able to assist all of you in whatever ways that you wish to be assist in English okay Right, so I'm not sure um, what are the rules and regulation with your previous teacher. It was Miss Erin, can before this was it Miss Erin? Yes, Miss Miss Erin. Miss Erin, okay. But uh, what I find most useful when you're doing a communication class is always to have a notebook with you, and that notebook should not be combined with any other subjects. Dedicate that only notebook to English. So whenever, even when you're not in class, whenever you're reading newspaper or you're listening to the news, you happen to catch anything interesting about English, just jot it down in the notebook. I recently joined an Arabic class and I find that very helpful, having a notebook only dedicated to that particular language. Okay, so I'm sure all of you have notebooks for English, right? And I'm a person who loves using highlighter and post-it notes because I like things colorful. So if you could have highlighter and post-it notes whenever we're talking, whenever we're having classes, that will also help you a lot in, um, what do you call it, in getting and digesting more English words. Okay, there are more people coming. Wait, Shira is coming in. Okay. 
So dictionary, it's not compulsory for you to have a dictionary, the physical dictionary. You can always go to dictionary.com. Ah. I love using dictionary.com. It's very comprehensive. It's easy. It's just at the fingertip. Okay. And of course, come with a positive mindset that English is fun. English is easy and you love English. Okay. So far, so good, everybody. So far, so good, Miss. Okay, thank you, Zarifa. Okay. Let me see, we've got three so far. Right, classroom rules, just the normal bit because oh, I like to set, not to say rules, actually. Um, it's more like uh, having a mindset, what kind of mindset that you want coming into a class. So just this four easy mindset, be attentive, be engaging, be productive and make sure that you have fun at the end of the day because you should know that we are in an adult class it's not stressful you're not doing it for an exam or anything it's just for you to improve yourself in terms of communication skills in english so at the end of the day have fun and be engaging okay can you hear me clear, clearly am i talking too fast anyone it's okay. No, okay. 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 If, if you feel like I'm talking too fast, just let me know, okay? Because I'm looking at the screen right now and I, I cannot see anyone's faces at this point. Right. So if you're ready, it's this is the lesson for today. We are going to learn informal versus formal English. Okay, before we start, could I just ask who would I... Let me just... Call a name here. Uh, are you? Yes. What's the difference? What What do you think formal and informal English are, and how are they different? Informal and I think informal is something like we say bahasa pasar. Bahasa pasar, okay. Contoh, can you give me example? Macam mana? Like, informal English tu. Uh, I want to, but we use I wanna. I wanna, okay, all right. That's a good example. Um, what about Salisa? What do you think are some of the differences between informal and formal English? Uh, in my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, formal is something words that we are using um, in proper words. Mm -hmm. For example, um, yeah, when for example we're using doing write 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 the the email to to client for example, mm -hmm. I would like to invite you to attend the the meeting on uh, on that on twelve uh November two thousand twenty. Okay, so good, good, yeah. What is uh for me is the uh the formal formal word. For informal, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, for example, um, um, you can you can join the meeting on. No, ah, betul yeah. betul yeah. Ah, You're on the right track. Betul betul. 2021. Is it is it correct? My yes. example. Yes, like you gave an example just now. You are writing an email kan to a boss. You when you're writing or talking to someone of higher authority. You don't say, I want you to come because want is actually very informal. So like Salisa mentioned, you would say, I would like to invite you. So when you're talking to a lecturer or you're talking to your boss, this is the kind of language and tone that you, be, you would be using. But when you're talking to your colleagues or your friends, then you can say, I want, I want, I want this, I want that. So that's the gist of it, lah, informal and formal English. Okay, so this is what we'll be looking at today. Right, so I'm going to give um, all of you about a minute. Read through these three exhibits, exhibit one, exhibit two, and exhibit three. And tell me which one is informal, which one is formal, and what's the other one. Okay, cuba baca dulu. Mana nak tengok muka you guys ni boleh tak? Okay. Can you guys see your faces too on the screen? Yes, okay, good. Yes, you can. Cairo, we cannot see you now. 
Okay, wait, I'm just going to make sure that you can see all of it. Okay, good job. Okay, any idea? Exhibit one, is it formal? Is it informal? Or there's another one actually. Zarifa, what do you think about exhibit one? Uh, I think it is, sorry, but the delivery will be late because of the bad weather. Mm -hmm. I think it is for informal. Informal, because, yeah. Because Why? it's like we talking with, uh, like we talking spontaneously with people. So I think it's informal. Yes, good, correct. So exhibit one is like an example of an informal language. Um, can you spot some words in exhibit one that clearly show that this statement is using informal language? Haja, can you spot some of the words, Haja, in exhibit one yang menunjukkan this is actually informal language, dia tak formal? Uh, but. But, okay. Uh, but. Correct? You're starting with but, kan? When you start a sentence with but, definitely that is informal. What else? Yes. Uh, sorry. Sorry, good. Yes, okay. sorry for informal. Yes. Uh, late. Mm -hmm. Late, okay. Um, and because. Because. Banyak. And <laughs> bad. Bad, yes, okay. So the, there are four words, yeah? Four words in this exhibit. Yang menunjukkan the informal. Number one is sorry. Sorry, it's it doesn't sound in. You might feel like kenapa apa masalah dengan sorry kan? Sorry itu sorry lah. But actually, when you're talking to someone in a, in a more formal setting, macam dalam meeting, you would say uh, my apology or I regret for my lateness. Contohnya, okay. Mm -hmm. So it sounds a bit more. Um, when you're talking in formal language ni, it sounds a bit more tersusun and usually it's longer, the sentence. So instead of just saying, sorry, sorry to sound very um, friendly. Okay, so sorry, number one. Number two, but, definitely. So what would you replace but with? Kalau nak bagi dia a bit more formal. We regret. We regret, like you look at exhibit three kan? We regret to inform you. Or you can also, also replace with however, okay? A shorter version and a more formal version of but adalah however. Or unfortunately, however lah usually yang people guna. Okay, another one is late. Late is quite informal. If you look at exhibit three, which word in exhibit three yang ganti late ni? Delay. Delay, yeah. Okay, so you can say, I'm sorry about the delay. You're saying sorry for something that is coming late. You always say kan kalau you baca email when you purchase something online. And when you get an email, they will usually say sorry about the delay of the package delivery. Usually kalau ninja van. If you notice ninja van, they usually use the word delay. Okay, but Shopee tak lah sebab Shopee is very informal. Okay, and bad. Bad is another one because bad it's not only informal in terms of speaking, even when you're writing, it is very discouraged to use the word bad. They even to SPM point, I tell my students always do not use the word bad, betul tak Zarifah? Okay, because the word bad tu menunjukkan your lack of vocab. You do not know a lot of English words. So replace it with something else with, uh, for example, with the, um, what's the word, yeah? with the condition that does not meet your standard or with an adverse weather condition. So these are words, oh, someone else is joining. So these are words, they actually mean the same. Cuma bezanya, bila you guna dalam setting formal dengan setting informal. Okay, right? Okay, let's look at exhibit two pula. Cairo, what about exhibit two? What do you think it is? Informal. The apa? Informal. Can you read Cairo? The what did it say? My apologies, yeah. The delivery is a bit late because the rain is very bad. Mm. 
This is not only informal. What else can you say about this one? Have dialect. Have dialect. Yes, very good. Dia menunjukkan. What do we call this kind of language? Sorry, ya. Don't know lah. Okay lah. Accent. Dialect. Dialect. Dialect ke accent lah? Which one? Apa beza dialect dengan accent? Accent is where they pronounce the words. Mm -hmm. Dialect is the way of the community are spoken. Yes, dialect ni a bit more focus on community. Macam contohnya dialect uh, orang Kelantan. Sebab it's a bit more community kan. Dialect orang utara, orang Penang. But accent usually it's a bit of a wider uh, audience. Contohnya the accent of the American people. The accent of the British people. So accent is wider, wider scope. Dialect tu yang kecil-kecil. Okay. Ni dialect lah. Kita panggil Manglish. Have you heard of it? Manglish or Singlish, yes. It's very specific to Malaysian. The word la. And we like to have words like tapau, like kantoi. Uh, these are all Manglish slang. Okay. Right. Now let's look at exhibit three. Definitely exhibit three is formal English. Uh, are you? Are you or are you? Uh, yes, miss. Are you, can you tell us which there are, how many words here? There are four words as well in exhibit three showing that this is definitely a formal language, formal English. Mm, I think we regret. Mm -hmm. uh, inform. Mm -hmm, correct. Delay. Delay, yep. The opposite of late. And do too. Due to, correct, yes. Due to is also very formal. The um, adverse weather conditions. Yeah, what, correct, good. Adverse weather condition because it goes again, kalau tengok exhibit satu, it says bad weather, kan? Mm. So the way of turning it to become more formal, you are using a higher frequency or higher level of vocab adverse weather condition okay and then due to is actually really good that are you pointed it out due to will always be used in formal setting if you're writing your assignment instead of saying because this happens because this reason is because you can change it to due to or due to the fact okay so this will really help you in improving your formal setting speaking okay so far everyone Yes. Any questions? Mm -hmm. You not clarify ke apa, apa No? So far, no question. Okay, so far, so far, so good, yeah? So far, so good. Okay, good. So, we've looked at uh, informal language, which is exhibit A. Exhibit 2 ni pula, kita punya slang yang Malaysians like to use. And exhibit 3 is an example of formal setting, which you use with your boss, with someone of a higher authority, when you are writing to a newspaper. So different, different conditions. Okay, let's go to the next one. Shall I go down? Okay, I'm going to talk you guys. Right, there are six differences yeah, between formal and informal English. There are many sebenarnya, but tonight I'm focusing only on six. I'm going to give you one minute just to go through, read on your own. Then we go through together. Okay, let's go through one by one. Yeah? Number one, how are they different? They depend on setting and situation. Like we've discussed just now, either office meeting ataupun friendly outing. Okay, so for office meeting, obviously we would be using formal and with friendly outing, we'll be using informal language, informal English. And the second part is quite important. Okay, the grammar, 
Grammar untuk formal English dia akan gunakan model and pronoun dia akan berbeza. Um, does anyone have any idea what are examples of models? Ada tak siapa-siapa? Is it uh, means? Is it the word slash shall slash ought to? Yes, correct. Zarifah is written there kan? So, yeah. models kalau untuk formal setting, I think earlier was it are you are you mentioned when you're writing to someone or you're speaking to someone yang formal setting you don't say I want you say I would like to invite you so the choice of word to would shall or to you gunakan model ni untuk formal ya yeah? and uh, the pronoun that you usually use is the third person pronoun dia macam secara ramai you would say at McDonald's we would like to thank our customers so they gunakan perkataan we instead of i menunjukkan that is a formal setting so if you look at starting from here i tunjuk kat sini starting from here can will tambah i and me this is all informal setting untuk informal you're a bit more individualistic you selalu cakap pasal i i i saya 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 but kalau formal they look at the organization ataupun the kumpulan as a whole. Sebab formal selalunya setting dia untuk syarikat, untuk sekolah, untuk formal setting. Okay, so that's how it's different. And for formal contohnya, let's say you're talking to um, your lecturer. You tak boleh kata, teacher, can I go to the toilet? Although sebenarnya memang most students cakap macam tu kan. But it's actually not proper. You would say teacher, could I go to the washroom? Could instead of can. Okay. And then for example, um, another example would be, teacher, will you come tomorrow? That's also not formal. You would say, teacher, would you be coming tomorrow? So instead of guna will, untuk formal writing, you cakap would. Okay, so that's for number two. The grammar would be different informal and formal. Okay ke dengan number two? Okay. <coughs> yeah. okay. Miss Azza okay? Okay. Alisa okay? Okay. 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 Alright, the third difference between formal dengan informal is the sentence length. Again, formal sebab dia jadi, dia macam bahasa yang berbunga, bahasa beradab kan? That's why it's a bit longer. Even for English pun, Bahasa formal ni dia panjang sikit. Sentence length for formal English is longer. Like instead of just saying we are sorry we are late, dia jadi we regret to inform you for the delay. So see, the difference kan? The length for informal shorter, for uh, formal is longer. For slang dia akan jadi lagi pendek. Sorry lambat, macam tu je. There's no proper pronoun, there's sorry late kalau in English kan? So that's the slang, yeah? Kalau slang, memang there are no structure at all. Right, so that's for number three. Number four, the vocab, which we will look at after this, the choice of words. So contoh would be, yang paling senang that we've gone through tadi, instead of saying we are sorry, we regret to inform you. The vocabulary, they're different, okay? And then number five. Number five here is also important. Um, what do you think it means, contractions? Short form. Short form, yes, Cairo. Contoh dia macam apa? I cannot. I can't. Hmm, yes, kalau uh, informal kena macam mana? If, uh, sorry, if formal. Formal, formal I could, could not. Not. I could okay. not, yes. Okay. Kalau formal kan, dia tak boleh kata cannot. Sebab can tu kan informal. You would change it to I could not. That's for formal. Okay. Tapi kalau it's informal, you're talking to your friends, you're talking to your colleagues, you're talking to your neighbours, can just say I can't. She's there. She's not coming. Okay. You boleh guna contraction. Contraction tu is this one. Yang ada a frost fee tu and then she's, it's, I'm that those are contractions. Okay. All right. So that's for number five. Number six, the tone and slang. 
here if you're writing like again no emojis you know what emojis are again do you know yes the yeah the one where you use like the icon dalam whatsapp semua tu kan so those are emojis not allowed prohibited in um formal writing emoji will be writing email ke whatsapp ke doesn't matter no short forms so short forms example of short forms that's anyone know example of short forms in english uh, yes alisa sorry etc tak dengar etc ttc etc etc yes good etc etc tak boleh lagi apa lagi contoh short forms fyi fyi yes for your information and you're talking to your boss or your lecturer fyi no btw tak boleh by the way yeah ie ie yes ie pun contoh kan yes. nope uh -oh. not not allow informal writing informal setting tak apa okay so those are short forms that are tro uh, totally prohibited in informal sorry formal writing okay ada i need this asap you've seen that kan asap as soon as possible so hmm. tu pun tak boleh those those kind of short forms memang cannot lah and colloquial language any idea what colloquial language is anyone tahu tak apa tu colloquial language tu tak tahu ha nah, macam contoh yang kita sebut tadi lah tapau koyak kan and lately the word koyak has been trending isn't it <laughs> on on social media and everywhere koyak tak boleh cannot be used in formal setting okay right so far so good at the six study yes okay so okay good. all right good good after this you'll be doing a role play yeah everyone okay so before we do the role play i'm going to let you do some practice first um here are vocabulary like we so just now vocabulary plays a very important role in deciding whether this statement is formal ke informal so for us to decide if we we need to speak informal ataupun informal punya english we need to know which kind of words or vocabulary to be used right so here are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 i've got eight actually there are more tapi tonight we're just looking at eight I am going to give all of you again about 2 minutes very quickly look at these words and decide are they formal english ataupun informal english This is important when especially when you're doing assignments ke these are important words Let me see who I've not called yet tonight. Uh, Arlina. Arlina, can you tell us for the first one, which one is informal, which one is formal? You require formal, mm -hmm. need informal. Need informal. Okay, can you choose one person to do number two? Um, Azawati. Okay. Okay. Ms. Azawati. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay is informal. Acceptable mm -hmm. is formal. Is formal. Uh, because your name kan Azawati is like my former teacher. I mesti ter ter nak panggil you Miss Aza. So is that okay? <laughs> okay. Your name is exactly like my former teacher. <laughs> uh, it's Miss okay. It's okay. Eh? Asa, uh, can you try uh, saying it in a sentence? Macam mana nak guna acceptable tu? Menggantikan okay. Okay. Uh, mm, acceptable. Okay. Uh, the proposal. Uh, the proposal is acceptable to me. 
the proposal you want to say because the, the proposal is okay then ah uh, in a norm in uh, uh, if informal uh -huh. the, uh, i will i will say uh, the proposal is okay with me but uh -huh. uh, if writing to in email uh -huh. uh, i will write the proposal is acceptable for me Okay, so usually when you're writing, acceptable to would be the last sentence. So you would just say, the, uh, this is acceptable, full stop. Or the proposal is acceptable, full stop. Ah, okay, okay, good, good. All right, uh, Azawati, can you choose the next person to do number three? Okay, it's okay if you call me Azza. Azawati Azza. is too long. <laughs> okay, okay. Azza, can you call the next person, Azza? Okay, uh, Siti Haja. Siti Haja, all right. Okay, thank you, Azza. <laughs> okay. Uh, buy is informal mm -hmm. and purchase is formal. Purchase is formal. Okay, try using the word purchase, Haja, to make a sentence. Thank you for purchase with, uh, with me. Okay, kalau ada for, dia kena, the verb after dia, dia akan jadi ing. Yes. So, yes. you would say thank you for purchasing this. Oh, Sebab dia ada for okay. dekat depan tu. Jadi dia jadi ing. Kalau you nak guna purchase saja macam mana? Uh, 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 you can purchase, uh, uh, you, can, you can purchase uh, this item mm -hmm. through uh, online banking. Nah, good, yes. You can purchase this item through our online website or you can purchase this item online kan guna the word purchase or usually if you buy something and then they will send you an email dia akan kata thank you for your purchase full stop okay. terima kasih atas pembelian anda right okay haja okay. next person haja uh, salisa salisa can you do the next one uh, hub is uh, informal mm -hmm. And then assistant is a uh, formal, formal. Formal, okay. How do you use assistance in, let's say you're talking to your colleague or someone you just met at work? How would you use that in a sentence? Uh, we seek your assistant. Mm -hmm. You submit the necessary, docu the necessary document for mm -hmm. uh, our proposal. Wow, ni memang selalu guna ayat ni kan? <laughs> Ayat yang sangat ni, template, ayat template sangat. Yes, you say that we seek your assistance. Good, uh, kami memerlukan bantuan anda kan? So, we seek your assistance in this matter. Contohnya. Okay, right. Uh, siapa tadi? Is it Salisa? Was it Salisa tadi? Uh, okay. Uh, Salisa, you, can you choose the next person, Salisa? Uh, I choose uh, Shahira. Syahira? Ha. Syahira saya. <laughs> ada Syahira eh, lain ke dalam? Ya. Ah, ah. Ada ah, Syahira lain? Ah, ya. Yes. <laughs> oh, ada Syahira lain. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Syahira, yes. Uh, one is uh, informal. Require mm -hmm. is formal. Formal. Okay, Syahira. Cuba buat ayat dengan require. Are you a student, Syahira? Ah, uh, uh, no. Uh, I'm... Baru uh, graduate and hmm. baru bekerja lah. Baru bekerja. Okay, let's uh -huh. say you're talking to um, your boss. Macam mana you nak guna ayat require tu? Uh, uh, require. Uh, it, will, uh, it will have require much research to produce some product. Uh -huh. uh, Uh, so, uh, ayat dia, it will require, it, it will have required much research uh, to produce some product. It will require, kan? Some research. Uh -huh. Betul? Yes. It will require some research to do this product. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's say, macam contoh ayat tu, cuba you buat informal kan pula ke one. Boleh tak? Uh -huh. Hmm. Dia actually in this case require ni kalau regarding Shahira sentence you can change you can also use it in the context bila ayat informal dia adalah need. 
Contohnya tadi you kata it will require much research, correct? Ah uh, ah uh, yeah. So when you make it informal, it will sound something like this product needs more research. Uh. Needs kan. So uh, require uh. ni can be either for one, either for need. Okay. So whenever you're thinking dalam bahasa pasar dia adalah need ataupun dia adalah want. So you know you can use require for that context. Okay? Uh, okay. Okay, Shahira, the next person? Uh, next person Zarifa. Okay, Zarifa. Zarifa tak tahu siap ni. I thought Zarifa <laughs> when she was in as uh, she was in 2019 SPM kan Zarifa betul? Yeah, 2019. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, the inquire is formal settings and mm -hmm. us is informal settings. Correct, okay. Zarifa, let's say you're talking to your lecturer and you want to say, I want to ask you for something. How do you change that to formal? Formal. Uh, madam, I would, I, I am, I feel inquire. I, I feel, uh, madam, I feel inquire about this task. I feel inquire, is it? Yes. Because you would say? Uh -huh. Kenapa you kata feel kat situ? Because inquire. Mm -hmm. if, if I if I don't put feel, so mm -hmm. then I inquire about the task. Okay. Which Kalau you nak hand. tambah something dekat depan, Sarifa, you would put a model. I would like to inquire or mm -hmm. I wish to inquire about something. Oh, I wish to inquire about something. Hmm. Oh, okay. okay, so usually inquire depan dia adalah models. Would ke or wish ke? Alright? Uh, Alright. Okay, Zarifa, the next one. The next, the as, as one. Mm -mm. And uh, the me versus can. Second last. Oh, the, me, the me versus can. The me is formal setting and mm -hmm. can is informal setting. Okay. Contohnya, okay, okay teacher right. Asia is coming in. Contoh in a sentence, Zarifa? Uh, for example, for me is, may I borrow your books? Mm -hmm. And a uh, sample for can, uh, can I, can I, can I take your pencil? Yes, yeah, so can when you're talking to your friends or someone close to you, right? Mm -hmm. But you make it formal, you just change the choice of word to be to me. May I borrow something? Is it it? Yes. Okay. Uh, have we called out everybody? No. Sorry, Fudge. No, no. Siapa tu? Cairo. Uh, yes. Cairo. <laughs> sorry. Last one, Cairo. Think versus belief. Hmm. Think is for informal. Belief mm -hmm. is for formal. Good. Okay. Put it in a sentence. Macam mana? Untuk belief. I believe that your suggestion is pretty good. Is? Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, ayat depan tu dah formal dah. Pretty good, is that formal? No. No. Pretty good is actually very informal. How would you change it to formal English? I believe that your suggestion is the best. Is the best. Okay, boleh? Or you can say, I believe your suggestion is can be considered. I believe your suggestion can be considered or could be considered. So saying that actually your acceptable. suggestion is pretty good. Yeah, it's acceptable and it's pretty good. So sebab you're talking in uh, formal setting kan, dia jadi bunyi dia macam tu. Okay? Right. Any questions so far? These, these are just very basic, yeah, basic vocabulary or choice of words that are often used in Classroom setting, in university setting, in work setting. Usually ayat-ayat you guna untuk bercakap or type email lah. Uh, okay. Miss, uh, Miss yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, the sentence that you said is, I believe that your suggestion is uh, could be considered hmm. or can be considered. Which one is uh, uh, more formal. Formal. formal? Could, could or can? Could, could. Because could, could usually... For really formal setting, can would make it less formal. Can would make it a bit informal. I mean, not a bit informal, very informal. Okay. So, a uh, choice of model that you would use to make it formal would 
instead of one or will, could instead of can, and then you would also say should. Should you come tomorrow? All right. So these are choices of model that are best when you are talking in formal setting. Okay. okay. All, right. All right. Any questions? Any other questions? I welcome questions. And can I know the differences between require and inquire? The inquire and require. Yes. Okay. Require is sort of like you perlukan sesuatu. Um, the job, contoh ya, abang sentence. The job requires me to work extra hours. Nampak tak dia memerlukan, dia need you to do something. Kalau inquire pula, inquire is when you're asking for something. I would like to inquire about the job. Saya ingin bertanya tentang kerja ni. Does that answer your question, Cairo? Uh, Madam, how about uh, curi? Curi. Ah, curi is a good word. Curi is another good formal word. Contohnya, when do you see the word curi selalunya? Siapa tanya tadi tu? Salisa. Salisa, uh, uh, give me uh, an example where do you usually see the word curi? Uh, I would like to, uh, I would like to uh, request some curies from uh, your side. Yes, so curi is another word that can also be a synonym for inquire. Okay, so the team would like to query, Siti Ajar dah terkeluar tadi, sorry. The team would like to query more about the submission of this product. So, in other words, you can also use query to replace inquire. Okay, Salisa? Okay? Okay. Okay. So, query and inquire, they both mean, uh, mean the same thing. They can be used in whichever context where you want to ask about something. Right? Yeah. yeah. How about for, we are requesting the price for mm. the, is it require or inquire for the catalog or the, apa tu orang panggil, yang price tag harga setiap. Quotation. Uh, okay. Quotation. Yes. Quotation. So tadi you baca tadi, you sebut request ke tadi Cairo? Masa you baca tu. Ha? Huh? Tadi masa you baca, you ada sebut satu perkataan. Did you say request? Ah uh, yes. Ha, request is also another formal word that you can use. Yeah, we would like to request for your attention. So request can also be used in formal setting. If you don't want to use request, you can say we would like to inquire about the quotation or the price. So either you can say inquire or request. They both mean the same. Kalau about price quotation. Price quotation, you usually say request. More like it. We would like to request for the price quotation. Boleh, Karo? Boleh, boleh, boleh. Okay. Ada lagi soalan? Good. I like active, active group of people. Okay, yeah, everyone. Everyone else is okay so far? Okay. 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 All right, so we're going to move on to the next slide. What time is it now? I'm going to make sure that all of you get to speak. Sekarang is 9.33, so we would finish at 10.15. We will come back to... Kita tengok ni dulu lah, so that at least you have more vocab when you want to do role play sekejap lagi. Okay, these are more examples of sentences that you can use when in formal setting. Okay, again. Two minutes, just go through first the list of phrases and words. Entah dia dekat mana? Tempat selalu bawah tu. Okay, so again, have you, I'm sure you've seen all of these words before, kan? Ada tak tengok dekat mana-mana? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Especially when you're working in 
in a corporate setting, I think these would be something that you see every time, either through email or through WhatsApp. These are the, the lingo that they use in the office. Okay, now we go to the first word, enlighten. So what you can do here is, um, the sentence given, they are not to say, tak adalah dia informal sangat, but you can make it more formal by replacing one of the words or more with the word yang di bullet point dan tu. So number one, enlighten. Please enlighten the benefits of vaccination. Yes, good Azza. Please enlighten me more about the benefits of vaccination. So enlighten ni sebenarnya maksud apa? Uh, macam explain, terangkan. Ex yes, yes. When you want someone to enlighten you on something, uh, it means that you need more explanation. Okay, so you can use the word enlighten. The second one, advice. I need you can ubah more than one word. Cairo, would you like to try this? Advice. Can you advise me there? You boleh ubah terus ayat ya? Pun boleh. No problem. Tapi kena ada advice. Tapi kena ada advice. Kita blank lah. Blank. <laughs> Anyone would like to try? Hmm. Yang ni dia memang kena ubah banyak sikit lah. Almost ubah totally. Uh, I want to try. Yes, Hajar. Please, thank you. Uh, Madam, can you check and give uh, advice for my uh, final draft okay, of the good. thesis? Good, good try. Yes, you can do that. And another way of you doing this, you can say, this is, uh, for example, you're saying, dear sir or dear madam, this is my final draft for the thesis, full stop. Please advise, full stop. Mm. Have you seen this this structure oh, okay. before? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Your the one that you gave Hajar is also acceptable. It's good. Another way of saying it for corporate, for example, mm. they always say this is the final proposal. Please advise. Usually um, we use the please advise at the end of uh, yes, sentence. correct, Azza. Usually, can when you're writing email and mm. you want people to check or give suggestion, that will mm. that is what you'll be writing. Please advise. But sometimes people are using uh, give feedback. Aha, uh contoh -huh. Cairo like how how. Feedback. Yang give me an okay. example, yeah. Can you, uh, can you, can you give feedback regarding on my final draft of the thesis? Yes, boleh juga, but um, uh, it's not as formal as when you say please advise. Please advise ni it becomes more of a more of a corporate term, but feedback pun boleh. For example, you can say. This is my final draft for the thesis. Would appreciate your feedback. So that's another way of you saying it using the word feedback. Boleh juga. Okay, cuma it's not as formal. Dia tak se formal. Please advise. Right? Okay. Now, Miss. Let's, yeah. Yes. Yes. Ah, uh, but the sentence "pit advice" tu mm -hmm. nampak short sangat. Ha, dia jadi short, betul. Tapi dia, it, uh, even uh, though kan, even though the rule of thumb that the formal language is usually longer, isn't it? Yes. Yes, but in this case, because it becomes sort of like a term, a corporate term that you use. So, it's acceptable. Uh, in a way, it has become longer because you see why, Haja? This is only one sentence, kan? The original sentence, there's only one sentence, right? Okay. So when you add on please advise, you will change the sentence to this is my final draft for the thesis, full stop. Please advise, full stop. So it becomes two sentences. All right. Okay. Hmm. Thank you. No problem. All right. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, yeah. If we change, if we change can to could, could, mm -hmm. you, could you advise my final draft for the thesis? 
Boleh, boleh. Like what Hajar did, putting it in this sentence kan? Pun boleh. Could you advise me on my final draft of this thesis? Boleh. Okay, so yeah. Just changing can to could already make it sound more formal. So no problem. All right. Okay, number three is my favorite. Look at number three. Would you always say that to your boss? Let's say your boss say, uh, or your lecturer say, I need the report by today. Would you say today because? Today because. Uh, we need to use that today because or can we change it? Yeah, you change totally. Okay. <laughs> so I what would it be? Noted and still do as requested. Very good. Yes, Alina. That's a very good employee's answer. Baik jawapan dia. Noted. Will do as requested. Correct. Correct. Okay. Normal, normal, normal reply to boss. Yeah, normal. Although, normal. In, your, no, although in your heart, actually, this is what you're saying, kan? Today, boss. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> like, does everything have to be submitted today? Yeah. So, yeah. But because we are the ones yang menurut perintah. Hmm. So, like, like how Arlina said lah. Noted. Will do. Well, I will do, do it. Yeah. No other choice, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how you would usually answer in your office setting and even in your university setting. Would you yeah. argue, Zarifa or Cairo and say to your lecturer, why today? Ada tak cakap macam tu? <laughs> no, me. No, Zarifa tak because she's such a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> what about Cairo? Cairo, have you argued with your lecturer and say this today because why, miss? Ada tak tanya macam tu? Hello, ada tak? Tak pasti. Tak pasti. <laughs> so usually you will always say noted as requested. So things showing compliance, you are complying to the order, right? Like it or not, you usually have to comply, right? Okay. Last but not least, come to my attention. This is a noun phrase. How would you change this? The sentence. I heard that your team is not cooperating well. So change it to formal setting. Are you? Are you ada? Uh, yes. Yes, are you? How would you change this one? Mm, come to my attention. Mm -hmm. um, I am just, wait. No problem. Take your time. How would you change this? Uh, can I change the whole sentences? Can, can. Um, your team come to my attention because not cooperating well. Your team has come to my attention because not cooperating well. Okay. Um, in that case, are you? It is saying that the team tu dah menjadi perhatian dia instead of what the team is doing dah menjadi perhatian dia. What is trying to say here? The attitude of the team has come to his attention, not the team itself. Mm. Nampak tak Ayu dia punya beza tu? Can I try? Yes, Arlina. You can try. It has come to my attention that your team is not cooperating well. Yes, good. Okay. So usually, um, whenever the employee or the boss or the teacher or lecturer, when they are trying to address something that is not uh, behave someone who is not behaving properly or a problem in the office they would start with this word it has come to my attention that usually it's to refer to something not to say negative but something that the boss or the teacher would dislike or disapprove of okay so usually this is to address something yang ta Aman lah in a way, you can say that not peaceful. Okay, so for example, it has come to my attention that you have not submitted your assignment. It has come to my attention that your group is not performing well. So, contoh, that's how it's being used. Do you know what it means, people? What does it mean? Mm. Mm. Do not, Malay, do, how, sorry, do, do not have teamwork. 
this mean yes you not have teamwork but maksud come to my attention to what does it mean macam saya perhatian hmm macam is it like we are uh, someone is not satisfied with something yeah is to show your dissatisfaction or to show your worry so hmm. something like i said yang macam um not not peaceful it's not that negative point but it's something that causing worry so you would say it has come to my attention that okay is it, uh, is it in malay uh, saya ingin menyatakan di sini in malay i i am thinking of the malay equivalent to it apa eh? ada tak perkataan um ia telah datang pada perhatian saya ada tak something like that ya yeah, dia menarik perhatian tapi um, macam menarik perhatian yang serius benda ah, tu. Dia dia just something serious. Dia menarik perhatian ah. tapi it's something yang perlu solution not ah, something yeah. positive. Yeah, yeah. Ah. So, I think in Malay pun ada juga they would be writing in letters selalunya HR. If the company has the HR writing in Malay, so it's something like ia telah datang kepada perhatian saya or something like that. Hmm. Okay? All right. So, this is what it means. Okay? So far so you've got Four from here, and previous slide we've got eight, so twelve to as foundation for you to start role playing. Now is what's the time now? Nine forty-five. Okay, nine forty-five. So we've got about half an hour. I think that will do. We are going to have a role play so that so that you can speak. Okay, but before that, I'm going to show you a phone conversation because uh, formal and informal phone conversations because your role play after this will require you to um, imagine a phone conversation with the partner okay so let me just play and you can have a look can't hear miss can't hear yeah hmm. cannot hear okay job let me just try why is it that you cannot hear yeah um wait okay let me try from my desktop sketchup yeah okay let's try this one tell me if you can hear no no why 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 play that play Tak play? Tak play pun? Haa. Uh -huh. Tekan play. Okay. Tadi tekan play tak dengar kan? Tak. Sekejap. I think I know why. Not this one. Sekejap eh. I'll try new share. Um. Okay. This one. Tell me if you can hear. Dengar tak? No. Tak dengar? Tak. <laughs> dengar bunyi ringing ke. Sorry, what is it? What is it? Dengar phone bunyi call. ringing. Phone ringing. Phone, oh, betul lah, phone ringing tu. That's that's ha. part of it. Oh, dengar, dengar. Starting, right. Ha. And now you try dengar, dia akan ada phone ringing and then ada dialog. So you tell me if you can hear that, okay? Dengar tak Sofa? Tak ada. Tak ada. Tak ada eh? No. Sekejap. Okay tak apa. Um, what we can do is afterwards I'm going to share the video in our group. I'll find out why I tak boleh, you guys tak boleh dengar the conversation. Sekejap eh. I'll try sharing screen again. Is it because, okay try one last time. Do you see the slide on on the screen? Mm. What do you see on the screen? English communication. Okay, betul. Sekejap eh. I'll try to go to the video and see. Try one last time if you can listen to the sound. Hopefully you can.
baca. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Can you hear, you guys? No. No, alah, okay lah, tak apa. I'll share afterwards, yeah? In our group. I think it must be one of the settings that I need to work on. Okay. So now I'll share screen again. And we go to the task straight away, lah, yeah? Your task of role-playing. Okay, can you see the... The slide, let's speak. Yes. Okay, so this is what you'll be doing for the next half an hour that we have. So in pairs, you are going to role play these telephone conversations and bearing in mind to use the six keys of either formal or informal English. Ingat lagi tak? The six keys, the two differences. What are they? Number one is, do you remember? Setting. setting situation. Good, yes. Yeah. Setting and situation. Number two? Grammar. Yeah. Grammar, yes. Very good. Number three? Sentence length. The? Sentence length. Yes, the sentence length. Correct. Number four? Vocabulary. Vocabulary, yep. The lot that we've been going through, those are all vocabulary. Number five? Contractions. The contractions, correct. So remember, in formal settings, you cannot say I'm. You have to say I am. And last but not least, number six. Tone or slang. Tone or slang. The tone. Yes, very good. So here we've got three situations. Yeah, Situation A. Person A is attending a telephone interview for a part-time job at Family Mart. He or she speaks with the manager of Family Mart, person B. So there are going to be two people role-playing the Family Mart telephone interview. And then situation two. We've got person A calling up Grab help desk to complain about the quality of the food ordered. So she or he speaks with the operator who is person B. This is situation number two. And situation number three, person A calls up his or her long lost friend on FaceTime to invite the friend, person B, to a reunion which will take place soon. Right, there are three settings. So first of all, you need to decide if you, the setting you are assigned to, if they're informal or formal. And then from there, you are going to drop. At least each of you will have three, uh, three times of speaking. So if one person has three times of speaking, the two of you will have six dialogues altogether. Yeah? So that's the minimum. You can have more, no problem. And here are some vocabulary to help you for each situation. Now, before we go here, let's decide who's going to be doing situation A, who's going to be doing situation B, and who's going to be doing situation C. Okay, let me see. Kita ada berapa orang ni? Kita ada uh, minus myself and teacher Asia. There will be eight of you, so which is just nice. Uh, speaking in pair, we will have two groups or two pairs doing one of the situations. How do we choose this? Not volunteer ke macam mana? Or do you want me to assign? Miss assign. Madam assign. Eh? Okay, boleh. So the first one, uh, family mat. Person A, the one going for the interview will be Aza, and person B will be Salisa. Okay, so ni untuk A, Salisa and Aza untuk Family Mart, and then untuk Grab pula, person A would be, let me see, would be Haja, and the operator would be Kairol. Okay, and then situation three here, situation three we will have. Zarifa as person A, the one inviting to the reunion, and Azli, let me see, siapa? Aliza, is it? Arlina, sorry. Arlina will be 
uh, person B. So another two people, Ayu and also Shahira. Let me see mana yang you guys nak buat eh. Okay, I'm going to give um, situation A lah, situation one. Situation one, Ayu will be person A, the one attending the interview. And then Shahira will be person B for situation A. Boleh? Boleh ke everyone? Right, I've assigned... Um, what do you call it? I've assigned everybody to a situation, kan? So now let's look at some of the vocab can, that can help you. How we are going to do this is, let's just let this flow naturally. So you plan your own, what do you call it? Your own lines. And then as your friend respond, you try to just modify whatever that you have planned according to what your friends responded. Boleh ke macam tu? Because I feel like if we were to break into rooms pula, nanti it's, it's not going to be authentic. I don't want you to have too much time of planning. We want it to be authentic and spontaneous so that it resembles the real life. So you just plan the three or four based on the given stems here. You can plan your dialogue. And then as your friend mentioned or as your friend read her dialogue or his dialogue, you modify according to what your friend said. Boleh? Okay. Okay. So I'll give you three minutes just to look at the the stem. And then I bagi tengok ni dululah so that you can understand your situation well. Okay. So look at your assigned situation understand the needs and requirements for your role. Ada soalan tak so far about the situation? Anything you nak clarify? Me? Yeah. So far, situation three, it is uh, informal. Language, right? Betul, betul, yes. That's the only one informal. Okay. Situation okay. two actually can be both informal or formal, but the operator would most probably be formal for situation two, grab me. The operator must be formal. Person A can, can go either way, not go informal or go formal pun boleh. Okay, I'm going to go to the stem. These are some uh, sentences that could help you. You may use them if you want to use something else, also no problem. Okay, now it's, now it's 9.57 at 10, we'll start. Okay, so you have three minutes.
Okay, it's 10 p.m. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. Azat, would you like to start? You seem very ready. <laughs> Just gamble. <laughs> the gamble. Azat and... Who was it? And Sariza. Okay, boleh. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. All right, good. Okay. Uh, can we start now? Yeah, okay. your situation yeah. is which one again? Uh, telephone interview for family month. Okay. I will be the All manager right. and Salisa will be the new staff, right? Okay, eh? everyone can I'm listen. I'm the manager, right? Oi, merebut dah kuasa. Eh, I'm the manager, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> please, can you turn to the previous slide? Okay, let me just go to the previous slide. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, there you go. He speak with the manager. Yes, so I'm a manager lah. <laughs> <laughs> okay lah. Okay, I'm ready for right. the question. <laughs> so it's okay. I'm uh, also excited to be the manager. Now. Okay, I just answer what you ask. Okay, okay good. Okay. Jadi start lah. Hi Azza. I received your application as a part-time shop assistant. Uh, are you just finished your studies? Uh, why right. are you interest, interested uh, in this position? Okay. Uh, okay, thank you, Miss. Okay, uh, uh, okay. I'm Aza. I just finished my uh, study. Uh, right now, I'm uh, waiting for any, um, any interview for, uh, uh, for working. Uh, so, for the time being, uh, I need to have a part-time job to cover my uh, my life in KL because uh, right now I'm alone here. So I need to have my own cat money to survive. Is it okay, Miss? Okay. okay. Uh, why are you interested uh, to this position? Uh, because before this, I took uh, uh, business and marketing. So, uh, uh, family, uh, uh, if I'm working with family, mat, I will uh, take a challenge or take this opportunity uh, to have an experience to uh, deal with people and then to uh, communicate with the customer. Uh, and then uh, I also enjoy, uh, I also... Um, uh, minat, minat, interested with this task, this job. Oh, okay. So motivated. Okay. Uh, are you had a work experience before? Uh, no, because I just finished my study. So this is my uh, first part-time job. Uh, if uh, you uh, accept me. Okay. Uh, okay, if I offer you, can you are you willing to work uh, overtime? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, it's good because I will get extra money from that. Uh, okay, uh, I will able to offer you as uh, this position. So I hope you can give a um, give a commitment to this uh, position. Okay, thank you. Wow, I got the much. job. <laughs> Thank you very much, Miss. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Salisa and Aza. Who would like to comment on the role play just now? Maybe we can ask who's here. We can ask Teacher Asya. Teacher Asya, any comment, Teacher Asya? Hey, yeah, you, you will be hearing a, a baby sound. Uh, wow, so far so good. Yeah, gila kuasa at the beginning. <laughs> so much the manager. <laughs> yeah, but then again, uh, uh, yeah, I, I like the idea of um, uh, what do you call it? We are focusing on fluency, mm -hmm. so meaning that we don't give a long time for them to prepare. Mm -hmm. Um, that we, which is very good because it reflects real life situation. Yes, um, yes. In correct. reality, yeah, in reality, you don't have time to prepare. You don't have time to pick up a pen and write something in English. You know, uh, in mm -hmm. that kind of situation. So I, I like it when you can you can uh, use variety of words to express uh, what you uh, to express your intention. Uh, so it is it, the meaning is clear. Uh, so yes, the, the meaning, meaning is clear. clear. Huh. And then what else? Um, 
like when we speak, right, the purpose is to focus on the meaning. We're not looking at, uh, at your uh, past tense ke, present tense ke, because at the end of the day, um, we want people to understand us. Okay, for me, both of you did excellent job in terms of um, uh, the, the intention, the meaning. Uh, so uh, the meaning is clear. I understand what you're trying to say. I understand the situation that you 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 are trying to. One is trying to get a job, and another one is a manager. Uh, okay, so the, keep up the good work. Okay, keep on speaking uh, because pra practice uh, because speaking is all about practice. Um, in short, one you will get there, and you are actually there. So yes, keep correct. on yeah ah uh, so you just polish and keep on practicing because uh, we need you to produce the output. You get the input, now it comes down to um, use the output, uh, use use the words that have been taught and make it as an output. Uh, meaning that you have to throw out the words lah, using your mouth, uh, not just listen. Uh, okay, all right. Thank you, Teacher Asya. Okay, thank, thank you, you madam. All right. Salisa and Aza, how do you guys think you did? Uh, okay, it's good. Uh, as uh, teacher Asia say, I uh, we don't have time to think mm. like uh, because uh, before start I prepared as a manager Wednesday. Can, yeah, uh, yeah. So I I have prepared all the question, mm. but during the session I will be the staff. So uh, it uh it it spent uh, spontaneously. Correct, uh, correct. Uh, but, and it's also very authentic, isn't it? Because you can prepare all the things in the world, but suddenly for a meeting or for something, can but suddenly so, anything can happen. Yeah, you are asked to be, right. um, you know, present something else that you did not prepare on or anything. But if you have that confidence, maybe like you, while well, you'll be nervous, can but uh -uh. you have the confidence to use the language properly to get your meaning across. So, whatever comes, you'll always be ready, right? Yeah. Okay, so good job and kudos to both of you, Azza and also Salisa. Thank you, Miss. All right. Okay, next one. Uh, let's go to situation B, situation two, the grab complaint. Who will be doing the grab complaint? Has anyone complained to grab before in real life? Aja, have you complained to grab before in real life? <laughs> Uh, I'm complaining through the application, not calling the yeah, health center. Yes. Yeah, correct. Haja and also Cairo, right? Oh, yes. yes. Okay, Haja will be which one? Let's go back dulu. I will be the uh, complaining person. The, compl the complaining person. And Cairo will be the operator, kan? Yes, yes. Okay, all right, let's go. Uh, hello and good evening, sir. Hello, this is customer service. How, how <laughs> may um, I am Akumar? How may I assist you? Okay, my name is Siti Hajar. Previously, I'm order. Uh, I uh, uh, actually I'm calling because I want to express my dissatisfaction. Hmm. Um, to express my dissatisfaction. Um, regarding my o my order, uh, through Grab application. So previously, I'm ordered uh, three slices of cakes, but unfortunately, um, the uh, uh, three slice cake from Secret Recipe, unfortunately, they uh, changed the flavor without uh, my permission. Mm -hmm. So how can you help? Hello. Hello. Sorry, kita. Okay, Hello? just yeah, to inform you. you that this conversation has been recorded and <laughs> can help us to improve our service. Wow. Okay, before we start to uh, start to launch a report, uh, can uh, can I have uh, may I require some confirmation detail about your information? Okay, sir. Okay, uh, name please. My name is Siti Hajar. Uh, can I get the number, uh, the telephone number? Okay, 012-345678. Okay, Siti Hajar, username. Okay, uh, what is the complaint again just now? Uh, I'm on three slices of cake from Secret Recipe. Okay. 
Okay, unfortunately, they uh, change the cake flavor without my permission. Okay. Can I know the which uh, branch did you order the cake? Uh, each uh, each slice uh, is RM uh, ten ringgit. No, no. Which uh, the location of the secret recipe, the cake, the location. The location is at Ion uh, Ion Rawang. Ion Rawang. Okay, I will uh, launch a complaint regarding of this issue. Can you jot down the yes. complaint number so that is easier for you to uh, get back with us? Okay, what is the report number? Two, two, three, four. Okay, sir. Okay, due to the issue that being launched, uh, I would like to offer you a coupon as uh, this report will take several days. Would you like that? Uh, uh, why uh, it takes so long? I mean, a several days, not a 24, uh, within 24 hours. Because due to COVID, uh, there are half, half of our... Our staff will, will be uh, working from home and due to that and the number of staff will be slow and the report will be take days. Okay, I'm waiting for the response from your side. Anyway, thank you for, the, uh, for your advice. Uh, I am sorry, sorry for the... Uh, I'm sorry, sorry on behalf of the great service. Is there anything more that I can assist you? Uh, that's all. Thank you. By that, this conversation will be end and you will receive a message. I will, uh, you, you are required to review the service that we are doing. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Okay, thank you, Aja and Cairo. That was a really good role play and it actually replicates a real complaint that would happen. Um, Haja, you've complained through help desk, right? Yes. On prep. So that's why you know the, the step to it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. What, what about Cairo? Cairo, have you worked with um, customer service before? No, no, I, I, but I have experience in like launching a complaint. Oh, you're always complaining, lah. That's why. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Good. Uh, Azza, do you have anything to comment, Azza, about their conversation just now? I feel like a real situation, and then mm -hmm. I feel like uh, I call because I have made a complaint to telecom. Uh -huh. What Kyrie, what Kyrol did is like uh the situation where where I communicate with telecom. With telecom, right? Like <laughs> yeah. Especially the recorded part. This will be recorded and yes. things like that. Request, uh -huh. request for the name. I yes, see. yes, <laughs> correct, correct. So it was good because it replicates a real situation, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Good job, two of you, uh, Cairo and also Haja. Very good. Um, Thank you. And also, I I uh, appreciate that. I heard a lot of, I, I actually noted a lot of effort from both of you, Haja and Cairo. You tried really hard to use the formal language. You use could, you use would, and a lot of me, may I know, may I assist you. So those are things that you would definitely use when you are in a formal setting. Okay, the, the choice of word study. Okay, good job. Right, I think we have two groups kan doing uh, situation two yes. ni. Another one is Ayu and Shahira, isn't it? Yes. Okay, let's listen to Ayu and Shahira pula. Complain kali ni macam mana bunyi dia? Ayu, Shahira ready? Is it situation two Situation uh, two kan you ke? Did I assign uh, you to something else? Situation one. If oh, I'm one ke? Okay. okay. Alright, let's go to one balik. So, we look at one, yeah. So, one is asking for a job, a part-time job in Family Mart. Are you and Shahira? Take away.
Shaira, you there, Shaira? Shaira ada tak lagi ni? Shahira. Alright, is okay, Shahira is still here? Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Alright, Shahira, are you ready? Ah, uh, okay. Okay. So I'm going to go to the next slide, yeah, where you can look at the vocab. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, I'm Shayla, calling from Family My. I'm talking to IU, right? Yes, I am. Uh, we have received your resume and gone through your profile. Uh, it seems very nice. Can I have interaction for a few minutes with you? Yes, of course. Can you tell us something about yourself? Uh, okay, firstly, my name is Nur Ali Galina. I am 18 years old and I am a graduated uh, from a graduated student from school. And uh, during to, uh, this, uh, the, uh, uh, right now, I am searching for my new work for me to earn some money. Uh, so uh, why are you applying for this position? Okay, I'm applying for this position because I think I have a skill in communicate with people and I can deal with people, uh, with customer and I think this is uh, a huge uh, opportunity for me to help my family due to this COVID pandemic. Mm. Shaira, anything else? Okay. Uh, uh, what else? <laughs> You've spoken mm. three three dialogues. Okay, that too. Uh, okay. okay. All right. Uh, Ayu, would you like to add anything? Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay. So I'm going to ask the two of you. Let's say, are you are you really 18 years old? Yes, I am. Yes. Okay. So you just finish. SPM is it? Yes. Waiting for the result then? Uh, waiting for the result. Ah, okay. What about you, Shahira? I'm 26. 26. Okay. What what are you doing now, Shahira? Um baru baru get baru kerja macam tu. Baru kerja. Okay. All right. So let's say I am a potential employee and I ask you what can you what could you contribute to our company? Give me one answer that you would give, Shahira. If I were to ask that, uh, that question, what could you contribute to our company? How would you answer that? Um, what can I contribute? Um, what can I is it the same question about why we should hire you? Ah, yes, correct. Ah, okay. yeah. uh, because uh, um, this is a wonderful opportunity for me to get interview uh, at such a renowned company. Uh, mm -hmm. Your organization will surely prove to be an excellent platform for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, to uh, establish my skill and knowledge in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, even though I am a fresher, mm -hmm. uh, I am assure you that uh, I will give my best and work to my full potential mm -hmm. uh, so that I can contribute as much as uh, I can toward the growth and welfare of this, uh, this, this, Company. This great, uh, this, uh, this company. Uh, you jawab last time you, you were being interviewed. Do you answer like that? Uh, so, uh, I dah lama jadi I, but, uh, I have sebenarnya. Huh. But, uh, I can, I can uh, sense that you, you, you were, you were memorizing. Okay, uh, that is, 
usually when people ask the question, yep, those are like what do you call template that people would answer. Okay, uh, yeah. but it's good that you understand what you are saying. Okay, so that, uh. let's say they want to add something, then teacher, oh, okay, I know how to add, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, I like the part where you say help to the growth of your company. That is a really positive way of saying that you are going to be a great asset to the company. Mm -hmm. The growth of the company. Uh, the growth. Okay, thank you, Shaira. Okay. okay, Ayu, I'm going to go very quickly to you, Ayu. How would you answer what is the one skill you possess that could help the company? One of the skills that I think I can help the companies is I can communicate well. Mm -hmm. You can sorry what? Communicate. Communicate, okay. Well with the people. Mm -hmm. And I can uh I can you can <laughs> okay. okay uh Okay, first I can uh, communicate with, with well with the, with the people, uh -huh. and I think this is uh, one of the skills that everyone needs uh -huh. to to talk with uh, people around you. Uh -huh. And uh, as we can see, not every people we can handle it properly, and sometimes mm -hmm. there is some people very aggressive sometimes mm -hmm. and I can handle it uh, with calm calmness mm -hmm. and I think this is a, a good opportunity for me to improve my skills improve your communication skills yes okay all right you are going to need this are you because I'm sure you'll be looking for jobs and scholarships and interviews for us university entry after this can Yes. So these are the kind of questions that you should be alert to. Okay? Okay, thank you, ma'am. All right, thank you. I think we've gone a little bit over time. So I'm just going to ask Teacher Asya. Teacher Ash, can we continue or should we proceed to next week? Uh, what, what about the rest? Um, we've got two more, two, just two more people to speak. Oh, Zarifa okay. and also... Zarifa and uh, Arlina. Okay. Uh, how, how, uh, maybe they are prepared. Okay. Let me ask Zarifa and Harleen, Arlina. Like Arlington. Arlina and Zarifa, are you guys ready? Do you yes. want to continue? I am ready. You're ready. Okay. They're ready to go. <laughs> so we'll <laughs> let them go. The last pair for tonight, last but not least, is Zarifa and Arlina. Okay. So. Situation, this is an informal situation, yeah? That both of you receive friends calling up another friend for a reunion. Okay, so off you go. Okay. Hello, Arlina. It's me, it's me, Zarifa. Uh, how are you? It has been long time since I have met you. Okay, hi, Zarifa. I'm good. Um, I've been busy working. Um, I'm overloaded with my office work at all the time how about you oh i'm 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 quite busy too but uh actually i'm called the reason why i call you is uh i i will i will not i will i i want to invite you for a reunion so um can i know uh when is your free day Wow, I think it'd be a great fun meeting old friends after so long. Um, can you suggest when the date? Yeah, I think it would be great if we can meet up uh, during week, week day, well, not weekdays, weekend, during yeah. weekend, because I think it, uh, both of us will be free on weekend. Is it so? Are you free on the weekend? Um, I will check my schedule and I will try to make time for it. Uh, I see. Okay, so uh, it would be great too if you can join uh, the reunion that will be held soon. So yeah. uh, let's meet uh, up. For yes, that. let's meet up. 
because it has been so long since I have met you. Yeah, I miss you so much. Yeah, me too. Okay, so see you soon. Right. Okay, good. Thank you, Arlina and Zarifa. Um, I'm going to open the question to everybody. Why do you think it's important for you? Like, for example, like Zarifa and Arlina just portrayed an informal conversation. Why do you think it's also important for us to know informal English or informal spoken language? Why is it also important? Yes, formal, we can see why can it's important, kan? For work setting, for um, university lecture setting, so we know when we want to use formal. But why do we also need to know informal English? For um, me, I think is because the way of the controlling the uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. Controlling, yes, the, the tone, kan? The, con so, the uh, will be the uh, how, how, uh, control. How? <laughs> control. Uh. What do you mean by control, macam mana, Cairo? How? For example, just now, like mm -hmm. the grab helping desk and the mm -hmm. customer, mm -hmm. where the Helping desk are controlling the conversation mm -hmm. to give opportunity for the customer to calm down each situation. Ah, correct. That's a good way of, uh, of using it, Cairo, of putting it. You, which is also very true. I did not think about that. But when Cairo mentioned it, yes, it's actually true. Why do you need to know informal um, spoken English? Is because if you look at Zarifa and Arlina punya turn taking, it seemed very proper, very well um, put out. Whereas in our informal setting, sometimes we don't practice that. We always have people, everyone wanting to speak and you're not giving chance enough to others. But when you know informal style, informal tone, informal um, exchanges, you will learn, especially when we, you need new people. Maybe with older friends or friends you've known for a long time, it's hard to control all of this. But let's say you're in a newer setting, you're meeting up with new friends. This is how you learn to control and take turn in the situation, in the conversation. It doesn't have to be formal, but yet there are some unspoken rules to informal speeches like Cairo mentioned, like giving, taking turn, giving way of speaking. Okay, any other ideas why we also need to pay attention to informal setting? Why else? Um, mm, yes, maybe, sorry. Paul. Maybe it will show how friendly we are with others. Mm -hmm. Yes, it shows your friendly manner. And when you know more vocab to use, for example, you have someone in the lecture hall or someone in your office who doesn't speak Malay and only speak English as his or her uh, mother tongue, then it's easier for you to connect with that person. You're not going to use formal language then, with a new friend or a new colleague. So these are ways of helping you not sounding too formal with someone of a different language of English background, but you seem quite natural at informal uh, speaking. Okay? Right, good. So we're going to wrap up, but just before we wrap up, let's just recap the summary of the class. I think you remember the six differences, kan, of formal and informal English? Yes. Okay, what are there? Who said yes to today? Haja. Was it Haja? Haja, can you let us know what are the six differences between formal and uh, informal? Okay, the setting between formal Informal. Yes. Uh, grammar. Mm -hmm. The sentence vocabulary. Mm -hmm. uh, contraction. Mm -hmm. Contraction yang is, it's, it is. Itu kan? Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. And the tone of slang. Tone of slang. Okay, thank you, Aja. Very good. Right. The Aja. second one. How is grammar different for informal and informal English? Are you? Do you remember? Are you? How's the grammar different? Mm. 
You can give me example of sentence pun tak apa. How they are different. I, I could, hmm? shall, would. Yes, uh, yang tu untuk apa? Yang tu untuk formal or informal? Uh, that one is for the formal. For and formal. The is like wants, I want and I can. Yes, good. I want something or I can do this. So that's informal. Right, thank you. Are you very good? And last but not least. Okay, I punya jam ni dah bunyi eh. What other interesting findings have you discovered in tonight's lesson? Anybody would like to share? Anything new that you've discovered today? I think um, some of verbs that we normally use mm -hmm. uh, that they love that uh -huh. really it's informal but mm -hmm. normally use when we uh, write an email mm -hmm. or talk to our boss. Mm -hmm. We mix up the verbs. Yes, correct. Because verbs, I think, mostly are very important. The kata kerja, kan? In distinguishing between formal and informal. So after this, when you are tasked uh, in writing email or chairing a meeting in the office, this will be very helpful for you. Okay, right. Anything else? Anyone would like to add anything else? Hmm. New, word, new words for my day. New words for your day, like what, Cairo? Enlighten. Apa? Enlighten. 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 Ah, yes. Enlighten tu maksud dia? Lupa dah. Understand. Apa yes. I explain about something kan. Nah, Could you enlighten me about something? Ha, ah, gitu. Yes. Okay. Right. Thank you so much, people. I think that is all. Is that all? Yes. Okay. So it's been such a great night with all of you. You guys are such a fun bunch. And... Uh, I can see that you make a lot of effort to learn, right? I will be sharing this video in our WhatsApp group. So in case you need to go back and look at the words, look at the verbs, just be, uh, you are welcome to do so. Okay, so next week we'll be looking at something else. Do you have any requests or anything in particular that you would like to, to focus on or to look at? Never mind, I'll, I'll let you think. And then you can give me the suggestions in the group. We've got the group. So when you go back, you, you just think of something that you would like to pay attention to, or you would like us to discuss, or you would like to be enlightened on. Okay, so you can share in our group. Can ask, uh, but uh, Miss, I like uh, that. Uh, I like like uh, this uh, 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 today class because uh -huh. we have a conversation, uh, uh -huh. among, uh, two way communicate, uh, two way communication uh, yes. with uh, uh, our upper uh, our team. Hmm. That's uh -huh. what I hope and try to do because you know being a teacher, especially a secondary school teacher, can sometimes I I'm afraid that I tend to talk a lot, so I'll try to make sure that in every class. You will be speaking more, hopefully. I may do the explanation, but you will be talking and leading the, the conversations most of the time. Okay, thank you, Azza. Alina, you would like to say something? Uh, yeah, um, I want to suggest is how um, to write a proper, is it a more to conversation? It can be mm -hmm. something like writing? Like, like for, for what is that? How can we write a good email? Ah, okay. It's more to writing, but it can also be taught and discussed orally. So that is something I can look into, no problem. Can, can. Because I know that will be very helpful for most of you that are working and also when applying for job, because these days with COVID, can, most of the things are done online. Email, WhatsApp, it's all done online. So we can look at that, inshallah. Okay. So, um, Ayu, Shahira, Kairol, Haja, who else? Zarifa, Salisa, and am I missing anyone? If you have Alina, Alina dah cakap dah. Salisa is sebut kan? So, if you just think of something, just type on our WhatsApp group, no problem. Okay? Alright, so have a good night, people. Stay safe. Okay. And I'll see you again next week, inshallah. Thank you so much for tonight, yeah? Okay, thank you, okay. Miss. Bye, okay. see you guys. Thank, thank you. you. Assalamualaikum. Bye. 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 Bye.
Thank you, Miss. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Good night, Miss. Good night.